welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, where am I taking you today? Well, I'm taking you to King Henry VIII's reign, which was a very eventful reign. We have quite a lot of events from his reign, but that's because quite a lot happened during it. Taking you back to 26th of October 1529, when Sir Thomas More took his oath as Lord Chancellor, Henry VIII's Lord Chancellor. Now, Thomas More's predecessor, Cardinal Thomas Wolsey, had surrendered the great seal of his Lord Chancellorship on the 18th of October 1529 following the writ of Premier being filed against him on the 9th of October, 1529. Now, Wolsey had been King Henry VIII's Lord Chancellor since 1515, so it's that 14 years, so a long time, loyal service to the king for a long time. But his downfall really came about as a result of his failure to get the king an annulment of his marriage to Catherine of Aragon, his mishandling of negotiations with France, and then at the same time the rise in favour of men like the Dukes of Norfolk and Suffolk and the Boleyn family as well. On the 22nd of October 1529, Wolsey pleaded guilty to the charge and surrendered all of his property to the king. He did, however, manage to climb back into favour with the king in early 1530, but it wasn't to last long. He was arrested in November 1529 and sadly died on the 29th of November 1530 at Leicester Abbey, on his way to London to face charges of treason. Now, I do wonder if it was uh, a better death for him to die. He died of dysentery, so not a nice way to go. But at least it was a natural death at Leicester Abbey, rather than getting to London and, you know, he was being charged with treason. So he would have ended up surely being uh, beheaded. Yes, not nice. Now, the confiscated Great Seal that had, of course, been taken from Wolsey had been delivered to King Henry VIII at Windsor on the 20th of October, 1529. And then on the 25th of October, the king took it to the man that he'd chosen to replace Wolsey. Letters and papers of Henry VIII's reign records on the 25th of October, the seal was delivered by the king at East Greenwich to Sir Thomas More in the presence of Henry Norris and Christopher Hales, Attorney General, in the king's privy chamber. And on the next day, Tuesday the 26th of October, More took his oath as Chancellor in the Great Hall at Westminster in the presence of the Dukes of Norfolk and Suffolk, Thomas Marquis of Dorset, Henry Marquis of Exeter, John Earl of Oxford, Henry Earl of Northumberland, and George Earl of Shrewsbury, Ralph Earl of Westmoreland, John Bishop of Lincoln, Cuthbert Bishop of London, John Bishop of Bath and Wells, Sir Robert Radcliffe Viscount Fitzwater, Sir Thomas Boleyn Viscount Rochford, Sir William Sandys, Lord, and others. And Eustace Chapuis, the Imperial Ambassador, also reported this event to his master, the Holy Roman Emperor, Charles V, saying, the Chancellor's seal has remained in the hands of the Duke of Norfolk till this morning, when it was transferred to Sir Thomas More. Each one is delighted at his promotion because he is an upright and learned man and a good servant of the Queen. Of course, we know that Sir Thomas More was to come to a sticky end too. He ended up being sent to the Tower of London in April 1534 after refusing to sign the oath of allegiance to the Act of Succession. He explained in a letter written to his daughter Meg, Margaret Roper, and to the oath that there was offered me, I could not swear without the jeoparding of my soul to perpetual damnation. 
and because he couldn't sign that oath, he ended up being accused of treason and he was executed as a traitor on the 6th of July, 1535. So just like his predecessor, Cardinal Wolsey, he fell dramatically from favour. He rose to great heights and he fell with, uh, yeah, fell dramatically uh, and ended up uh, being executed on the 6th of July, 1535. But let's concentrate on the fact that on this day in Tudor history, Sir Thomas More was probably celebrating and being very happy and feeling very stable in his role as Lord Chancellor and hoping that he was going to be able to give good advice to King Henry VIII. So we'll concentrate on the good thing rather than the bad event. Thank you for joining me. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live and you can, of course, give me a like as well. I will see you tomorrow with another Tudor History event. Bye. -bye.